the story where I was on George Stephanopoulos for this Good Morning America thing, and I said to George Stephanopoulos, I said, he says, would you do the Senator Landry thing again? I mean, do you regret it? I said, i do it again, but i do it differently. i do it outside of the federal building. And I might walk up to this on the street as a telephone repairman and say, hey, Senator, are your phones okay? So George Stephanopoulos says, you do it again? I said, no, i do it again differently. i do it again outside of the federal building. CNN reports, asked about whether he'd commit a crime again. James O'Keefe says, i do it again. <laughs> And they selectively edited out the fact that immediately after that statement, I said, I do it outside of federal building. So when it comes to editing, you kind of have to stand in awe of the mainstream media. There's no, there's no comparison between the amount of editing they do. And, but anyways, this is actually a, a, fairly, a fairly fair report he did on the, um, the NPR story. Very uh, kind of fair and balanced. <laughs> report on, on because the, the people resigned, so there's really not much you can say. Go ahead and play that. The media, an undercover upstart, has dealt a major blow to the establishment. Public broadcasting has been a lightning rod for years. Supporters call NPR and PBS a public service, with every penny the taxpayers pay for it. Critics say it's wrong to force all Americans to subsidize what they call a liberal agenda. And they have new ammunition now after an NPR executive was caught on tape in a conservative sting. This cost the head of NPR her job, and now the federal funding for public broadcasting is under more pressure than ever. Jake Tapper starts us off from Washington. Jake? Good evening, George. That's right. The CEO of NPR submitted her resignation today. Their chief fundraiser was also shown the door. They're casualties in a war over culture and spending cuts that threatens the very existence of public broadcasting, including Big Bird and Elmer. I love how they show the cartoon characters. What does this have to do? <laughs> the rain clouds gathering over Sesame Street today are due in no small part to this man, NPR's now former senior vice president for fundraising, Ron Schiller. Last month, Schiller went to the posh Georgetown eatery Cafe Milano, where he thought he was meeting potential donors affiliated with the fundamentalist Muslim Brotherhood, who were offering a $5 million donation. He was caught on tape trying to ingratiate himself to the donors by disparaging Jews, the Tea Party, and Republicans. A video released by conservative political activist James O'Keefe today showed the top fundraising executive for National Public Radio criticizing Republicans and calling the Tea Party racist. Yeah, I'm very proud of. Yeah, and what NPR 
have stood for is non-racist, non-bigoted, straightforward telling of the truth about our feeling is that if a person expresses his or her opinion, which anyone is entitled to do in a free society, um, there are compromises that are must be made. They can no longer fair people or lose all credibility, and that breaks your basic ethics. And he just slammed Christians in an early part of this. He slammed the Tea Party movement. And then he said this about you, your reaction. You know, this is unbelievable. I got my ad. He later adds a slam on Jews. He says Jews control the newspapers, but not NPR. I'm not kidding. Can you believe this guy? This guy's unbelievable. And he wants to call me a bigot, Sean. I'm the bigot. I'm the devil, Sean. Can you believe this? And he's up there, and he's going on about people in this diminished, this disparaging way. And he wants to make it out that NPR and, and he are the really the good guys. They're the smart people. And isn't it sad that more people like them are running America? Well, he's 